value process. Value process. The first time he dipped was when God healed him. But God waited for the seventh time to make him whole. There's a difference between healing and being whole. Process. Why would God wait for seven times to do what he could have done one time? God is a God of process. Everything about God is not done in a rush. There are things God wants you to learn. Even after you have been healed, you keep serving him. You keep serving him. You keep following him until you are whole. It's a process. You are following this God. You have not seen a breakthrough yet. Keep following. You have only deep ones. Keep dipping. You are a person who came to church and you have so much expectation. You have only dipped ones. Some of you might be your third dip. Some might be your fourth dip. Wait for the seventh. Just keep following. A miracle may not be obvious at the first dip. Second dip might not be obvious. Keep following this God. Keep loving him. It may take time, but it will happen. God may lead you round, but he can't lead you wrong. Your waiting time is not your wasting time. You say, I've been in church for 10 years. God said, you have only dipped twice. Keep dipping. Keep dipping. I've been in church for 25 years. God said, you have only dipped twice, thrice. Some of you are almost giving up. Meanwhile, you are in your sixth dip. Some of you are almost backing out. Meanwhile, you are in your sixth dip. Just one more dip. One more dip for a miracle. You are tired. I've tried everything. It's not working. God said, oh, if only you know this is the sixth dip. Only God can quantify the length of your dip and the number of your dip. Neman dip seven times in one day. Some of you, your seven dip might be in ten years. But God is saying, I'm watching. Some people are about giving up. And God said, they just dip the fifth time. Just two more dips. Two more dips for a testimony. Two more dips. It's process. It's process. The first time was when he got you. There's this thing about God I know. He's a God that he will always teach you patience. He wants to prove you. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 2. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 4. Follow them who through faith and patience inherit the promise. Hebrews 6 and verse 12. Many times we talk about faith. We don't talk about patience. Patience. Deep. You're about to give up. I'm not going to church again. I'm tired of serving God. And God said, wow. Six deep. And she's tired. She could dip one, two, three, four, five, six. And now she's tired. One more deep. Satan knows you have gone so far with God. And you are close to your miracle. That is why. You know Peter? When Peter stood and was walking on the water in Mark 14. Matthew 14. When he was walking on the water in Matthew 14. While he moved fast, Satan never showed him the wind. As soon as he was close to Jesus, that's when Satan told him he was sinking. When he started moving, Satan never told him he was sinking. When he got close to Jesus, Satan said, you are sinking. Anytime you are close to a miracle, that is when Satan brings discouragement. When he knows you are about to touch it, he starts giving you ideas, making you think that your God does not love you. Make you think there's no gain following God. Make you think that look at your friends who are not Christians, see what they are enjoying. See your friends who is telling you like Job's wife told Job, curse God and die. He starts showing you alternatives and options. He starts telling you that God is too late. God takes time. This one is in a hurry. Meanwhile, you are close. If you are not close, Satan will suggest that to you. He knows you are close. He's trying to work on you to make you give up and make you feel down. Make you feel God has abandoned you. Make you feel God does not love you. Make you feel God does not care about you. Make you feel you are wasting your time. All because he knows you are close. Some of you are in your fourth deep. Some are in their fifth deep. Some are in their third deep. Some are in their sixth deep. Some are about to enter their seventh deep. You're about to enter the seventh deep. Satan has attacked your prayer life. The things that pushed you into all the other dips, Satan is taking it from you. It was your prayer life that pushed you to the first dip. Your prayer life to the second, now the sixth. You're about to enter the seventh. Satan has withdrawn your prayer life. Withdrawn your appetite for the word of God. Withdrawn your desire to study. You come to church now feeling bored. Messages are preached, you don't write. You go to a point, you are just down. Because Satan has succeeded in wiring to your mind that what is the essence of serving God? What is the benefit of following God? Meanwhile, you are in your sixth dip, close to the final dip that will make you whole, that will make you become like one who God has ordained for greatness. Satan knows. So the devil is now working on your mind, telling you the reasons why you must not fulfill vows you made, pledges you made. 
You get before, you get before, you get before. The seven deep that will bring a miracle. The devil is already walking. He's walking because he knows that this seven deep, what nobody, your generation, what they have never achieved, he knows he's tied to you. Satan knows how many people will be a blessing to you. Like I said to them in Cameroon, Satan doesn't fight you because of you. He fights you because of the generations tied to you. Look at you, are you? Satan is not cared about you. When you look at the nations, the generation, the people tied to your life, he says, if I let this guy go, if I let this lady go, nations will be blessed because of him, because of her. So the devil is trying to stop you from the seven deep.